Okay. The ghostly figure of Lakmar forms from within the obelisk. The words trust in what you find bounces around in your head as Lakmar fades away to nothing. Well, let's go back a bit. The stairs wind away from you upwards from this landing to the next. Chilled air wafts down the stairs, sending a shiver down your spine. Take the torches. And go upstairs. A cold gray stone of this tower landing perfectly reflects your dour mood. Torch. I'm just taking all the torches. Okay. This circular room houses a massive telescope as well as all manner of stargazing paraphernalia. Ooh. Almost looks like a bazooka. You open the book to an interesting entry. You read the handwritten entry on the page. I have noted several observations over the past fortnight. The stars have moved into an unheard of alignment. The unnamed hero, the hourglass depicting endless time, the broken sword of betrayal, the hooded figure of Thanos, the life stealer. All these constellations are out of season and position, yet here they are, chasing the night skies. Unbelievable. This can only pretend a time of terrible danger and upheaval. The entry is signed by astronomer Laurel. Let's go look at this sucker. You step close and look through the telescope. This bright northern star represents Iridelos, the myth mythical eagle, and brings the morning sun each and every day. The Magi and fortune tellers call this twinkling star the Watcher, or the All-Seeing Eye. You seem to remember that this particular star is named after Aquadux, the mythical god of water and the ancient Tyene race. This far and distant sun is called Pharios. It honors the fallen one from the skies that came to carve out the plains of fire in the southern lands. Several of the stars glow predominantly within a strange constellation, one that resembles the tail of an ancient beast. Okay. Back to the banquet hall. Ooh, what is this? A star chart is affixed to the wall. You recognize some of the constellations. The Pouring Goblet of Salvation. The Broken Sword of Conquest. Okay. Uh, the reinforced door sits solidly within the stone frame. The door is locked. Item. Use key on door. You insert the key into the lock and turn. Success! The door is now unlocked. 
having served its purpose, you throw away the key. Open the door. And go in. Uh, take the door. A rock font filled with stagnant, discolored water is attached to the wall. Oh, goody. Go upstairs. Go upstairs. Take torch. Marble statue carved in the form of a female warrior with a spear sits on the landing. Perhaps it is fashioned in the image of a goddess. Possible. Oh, hello. When you enter the strong room, the woman lounging in front of you begins to speak. I did not know. What he sees in you. I'm not impressed. She shrugged before continuing. Forgive me. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Maylor Kehaw, Chief Lieutenant of the Dorakian. Okay. You wonder what would bring me to this wretched keep. Sounded just Surely like her, didn't nothing I? less than the summoning of a great lord. Nearly a score of years removed, Talamar the Black beckoned me, and I answered him gladly. The forces of Drakahan were mine to command. We fell upon these wizards like rabid wolves. Their powers, their elemental pets, they were nothing to one such as he. Now all have fallen or fled, all but one, for he is timeless. The coward has barricaded himself within his tower, an ancient artifact within his grasp. But we will have him still, or if my goblins do not pull him from his hole, when my lord returns, the wizard's head shall lie at his feet. Unlike my underlings, I will not underestimate you. She finishes with a low snarl. Her body growing, transforming. She is a changeling. A deadly race able to take the form of a monstrous creature. Oh, goody, she's the werewolf. Her transformation complete, the beast appears to smile, taunting you with a flip of her claws. All right, she's a werewolf. We need silver. Do we have any silver? All right, here we go. You quickly lift the bow and fire. The silver arrow flies true, burying itself deep in the heart of the wolf woman. That's right, it's not a wolf man, it's a wolf woman. The beast falls to the ground within moments, dies with a look of utter surprise on her face. How can you tell there's utter surprise on the face? The large body of the changeling lies lifeless at your feet in a pool of her own blood. I don't see any blood. Alright, I see a torch. Oh, we found a key. Ooh, a stake. What do we got? Ooh, another key. You rummage around and find a key. You discard the sack. Wow, two keys. Open the book, reveals the last entry. You read the entry on the last page. Summer Moon, year 1157. The wizard remains within his tower. 
holed up like some cornered animal. I've lost scores of my best troops trying to gain entrance. And for what? For naught. I did not agree on wasting such resources, but the master has commanded that our endeavor look legitimate. Intrigue means nothing to me, as I would rather use my arts to eliminate those nettlesome roots. However, my orders are clear. The charade must continue. Some per people pronounce that charade. Charade, charade. The charade. What is this? Loaf of bread. Ooh, it's a little stale. That's all right. I'll take it. You might need some stale bread. You never know if you need some stale bread. This blueprint shows an elevation of castle towers. Even though you can understand the you can't understand the writing, you recognize that the drawing represents the living castle. Ooh. I want that. The stuffed head of a trophy bear hangs on the wall. A trophy bear. Back downstairs. door is scuffed and dented almost as if someone tried to force it open the door is locked but we did find some keys you insert the key turn it and are rewarded with the satisfying sound of the door unlocking with a pleasant grunt you throw away the key <gasps> Ah, more torches. How are we doing on torches anyway? 25 torches. Okay. Well, I thought the torches would burn out a little bit faster than that, which is why I've been taking them. Go upstairs. Another one of these. A marble statue carved in the form of a female warrior. York pipes up. Including this one, you know how many end of the world quests I've been on? Come on, take a guess. One. An odd sensation tingles just at the edge of your consciousness. You sense there is a magic afoot in this chamber. Ah, magic foot. What about a magic hand and a magic head? The full fury of a huge thunderstorm is unleashed outside this window. Something large sits low to the floor toward the back of the room. What? What sits low? Picture the spell glyph in your mind and whisper the word flumerous. A brilliant white light flashes, followed by a strange wavering effect that illuminates phantom objects within the room. There's a magical glamour at work in these quarters. It does look kind of transparent. Can I open it? Thin material this paper crackles between your fingers. Why can't I open it? After a few tries, you manage to take the scroll. That was a few tries? It was the first try. Can I there, now I can open it. You unroll the parchment carefully, not to crumple it further. York whispers in a dramatic fashion. Something not right here, boy. I smell a powerful enchantment. Read the words on the scroll. 
One particular word stands out from the rest, spark. In your mind's eye, you see a glyph glowing with power as you quickly write down the strange marking in your spell book. The scroll crumbles in your hand. You've learned a new spell. I've learned spark. I wonder if I can set things on fire with that. Kind of self-explanatory, right? Torch. Take the torch. Go inside. Sound is amplified in this circular chamber filled with musical instruments. Ooh, musical instruments. This hand-carved flute is made from some type of wood. Four holes have been carved into it. It'll let me take it. Six strings run the length of this short-necked lute. It is a prized possession for any bard or tavern entre en entertainer. This large drum consists of a large animal hide stretched over a shell made with carved wood. It won't let me take that. This pointy conical hat is made from a soft purple material. Ooh. Made of elegantly carved wood, this harp contains a number of different linked strings from the column to the knee. It won't let me take it. Bummer. Can I open this? Nope, can't open that. Can I open that? Nope. Look at it. The intrinsically carved wood trim on this desk is amazing. You wonder what this piece of furniture would fetch on the streets of Gwynthel. Okay. Not much for that room. You trip over the roots as you head up the stairs. Why would there be roots at the top of a tower? Wouldn't they be at the bottom of a tower? This makes no sense. Massive twisting roots engulf the tower landing. The thick roots originate from the doorway to your left. Oh, so they're coming out of a room. Okay, let's hack and slash these suckers. A gnarled tangle of roots covers the door. You can almost make out a circular design on the door. Uh, oh, pfft. I could have just hit one. There we go. You hack at the greenery and reveal a door underneath. The overgrown roots and vines seem to want to immediately grow back. Uh-huh. Hello. This small chamber has literally been engulfed by roots and vines of all types that stem from a single point in the ceiling. You wonder what is up there and resolve to do something about it. You got a light. You lift your eyes to the ceiling, your jaw dropping in awe. You have found the source of the strange floor that has engulfed this room. Perfect, you should step in for a closer look. What do we got over here? This opening in the dense roots leads to a small nook. You drop to your knees and crawl through the grasping roots to the nook beyond. Amidst the tangle of roots and vines lies a small nook housing a desk and various scholarly paraphernalia. 